After a wonderful and refreshing trip to a uh, one-day trip to New Mexico to uh, blow some stuff up with Tori, uh, those episodes will be airing later. We'll, I'll keep you updated through Twitter. But um, I'm back and ready to do some more 3ds Max for you guys. All right, we're gonna pick up right where we left off in the last uh, the last week. Basically, we we'd set it all up so it looked pretty pretty nice, pretty nice when hitting render. However, as I said last week, it was not complete yet and not ready for for compositing, which is how we're gonna make our stuff look really really good. Um, we were basically just set up a render that was great for looking at it in 3ds Max in viewport. So today. I'm going to show you guys basically how to take what we had there and prepare it for two passes. One that's going to be just the objects and one that's going to be just the shadows. And so we'll be able to composite that in After Effects later on. While this does look mostly nice, it's not, it is not ideal because if you look at it right here, let's see here, we'll pop over to the Alpha Channel. You can see that the Alpha Channel, we don't, we don't have one that's really functional for what we're trying to do. First thing you do is you go up into your Material Editor. And you're going to go up to the camera projection material. Because as you saw before in the alpha, that was basically the entire camera projected objects were all solid white. What we're going to do is we're actually going to feed that into another material. And the material we're going to feed it into is called the V-Ray Material Wrapper. V-Ray Material Wrapper. Pull that entire thing over into the Material Wrapper and double click on it. And basically what this is, is this is a whole bunch of settings pretty much exclusively for, uh, for compositing, basically for rendering something for compositing later. And it allows us to affect various types of light that's being shown, what's being shown in the final render, what's getting through, um, what the alpha contribution of things are. Um, so we're gonna make a few changes to this. Basically the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tell it that these objects are a matte surface. And the second thing we're gonna do is turn shadows on, affect alpha on, and we're gonna change alpha contribution to negative one. Important thing to remember is we need to reapply this material because right now it's still just this, this base material applied over there. So we gotta select all of our background objects, click on that, and hit A to apply that over there. Let's hit render again. You'll notice a few subtle differences about it. So you notice this background right here it changed. So basically, right now, what we adjusted is now the entire background, um, not just the sky area, but the entire thing is passing through the original image and we're rendering on top of it. Let's look at our alpha channel. Let's explain what an alpha channel is. Basically, to make an image, uh, that's being saved. Here we have, we have R, G, and B. Those are the three color channels. Those are all adding up basically to be the image. And then there's a fourth channel called an alpha channel. And what alpha channel is, is transparency. Anything you see that's totally white is, is completely, you can't see through it at all. It's, it's an object that's there. Anything that's totally black is completely transparent. So basically you're telling it that everything that's not the balls is transparent. The shadows of it are, are well you can see they're a little bit, little bit lighter, a little bit gray. Uh, they're mostly, mostly not, they're mostly there, they're mostly not transparent. And then the ambient occlusion, like the extra little light, kind of like the, the, the shadows from the sky, the, the nice soft shadows around there, are, are falling off there. And so this is the kind of alpha that we want to see for the entire thing. Even though we have the alpha channel there for this stuff down here, the color that we're getting in there is still our background. So to render properly, we actually, we just use that background just for guiding stuff in. When it actually comes time to render, we're going to do another step, which is hit 8 on the keyboard here unclick the use map button. And what that's gonna do is when you hit render, it's just gonna render it out black. We see our balls, we see our box there, and we see this, this red, this is basically indicating the light that's bouncing off from the sun. It's bouncing off, it's light that's bouncing off the ball onto the background, that's the light there. And if you wanna check here with the alpha, we still have a proper alpha channel. So even though you can't see the shadows because it's all black now, they're there because the alpha channel is telling them to cut it out. So that's, that's how you properly want it to be. Rather than get everything perfect in 3D, we want to keep ourselves with as much control as possible. So we're actually going to render out two passes. Uh, the first pass is going to be just the objects, and the second pass is going to be just the shadows. And I'll show you the alpha channels for those as we move on here. The reason why we do the switches, the reason why we set everything up is because we still want to get all the reflections and all the light coming off of it. We just don't want to see it in our final render. And so that, that switcher basically allows us to do is make it so that it's so that you, you don't see it in your final image. However, all the reflections are there, all the background's still there, and all the light is accurately being, like it's, you can see here on the bottom side of this one, it's still getting the shadow from the ground. Uh, you can still see in the reflection, it's getting its own shadow. So it's still there for all intents and purposes, just not in this image. First, we're gonna render out without seeing the shadows. Very simple. We're gonna select our three background objects here. Right click, go to Object Properties, and Object Properties will move over to General here, and we're gonna unclick Visible to Camera which basically means, you see there's a whole bunch of different settings here. Basically you can tell, you can tell objects to have different properties in that like right now we just told it to not be visible to camera. What that means is that for the program it's still there and it's still treating it as an object, it's still there for shadows. However, the camera itself can't see it. And so let's look at the difference when we render. 
rendered out. Now you see that that, red, that little red glow there is gone. So if we check the alpha channel here, we now have just the objects there. The shadows aren't there. However, in the render, you can see, you can even still see the shadow in the reflections of there. It's all there. So this is our first, this is like our, basically it's our, it's our beauty pass. This is our beauty pass of all the objects. Now basically there's, there's two ways to render out of, of uh, 3ds Max with V-Ray. We have the built-in one, which is common down here. And you can see, and we're gonna get to these settings in just a little bit for render output. And there's also the V-Ray frame buffer. We're going to use the V-Ray frame buffer for this because we're going to render out an EXR, a full 32-bit, and we want to work in the, the correct linear workspace for color. And in order to do that with V-Ray properly, you want to do it straight onto the V-Ray buffer, which allows you to have non-clip full HDR 32-bit images. F10, go to V-Ray, and we're going to do a new way of rendering this out, basically. We're going to go over to the V-Ray frame buffer. We're going to click Enable V-Ray frame buffer. Check the box for Render to V-Ray raw image file. Click Browse, we're getting a resolution from Max, that's all fine. Hit Browse, and we're gonna change file type to OpenEXR, or .EXR format. Check the box for EXR use 32-bit output. And now we're gonna go to the location to save this. So now it's been checked and saved. So now if we hit Render, it should save us that image right there. Hit Render, and now you'll notice that it looks different. Now the V-Ray buffer is gonna look different colors. There's a few check boxes when it's rendering out of there that we wanna check. We wanna check uh, sRGB to display colors in that space. That's gonna make it look the correct color space. Let's double check our double check our alpha again. Yep, it's all good. And this one, when it rendered out, should have saved it right to the appropriate spot. There it is. Rendered it out, and it's saved. Now off, it's directly off the frame buffer. Now we've got our we've got our beauty pass. Now we need our shadow pass. You could render out the shadow pass out of the frame buffer as well. And uh, the reason why I'm not going to is because I want to show you both ways to render things out. And also, rather than doing EXR for both images, which we totally could and would totally work fine, I'm going to do a .png for the shadow file. Why? Because it's, uh, because it's a smaller file size and it also processes, processes faster with your, uh, with your After Effects or whatever compositor you're using. But when you're doing a big composition with lots and lots of layers, we find that uh, you want to try to optimize it every step so that you're able to function faster with it. Because if you're starting to get bogged down in rendering each frame to preview it, it gets very difficult to work. All right, in order to set up for the shadow render, we're going to go back to our three objects here, right-click, Object Properties again, turn Visible to Camera back on for them, click OK. Now we're going to select instead our four objects that are in the ground there, right-click those, Object Properties, and unclick Visible to Camera to them. And that will render. All right, this time you notice that the objects aren't there, but if we hit Alpha Channel, all the shadows are indeed there. So that'll be the shadow pass that we're looking to create. Um, but instead of saving out the V-Ray frame buffer, hit F10, unclick the Enable built-in frame buffer, and click on Common over here, and then now we're gonna use a traditional 3ds Max render output. So we're gonna click Files, we're gonna go to .png. The reason why we're doing PNG, not JPEG, is that PNG supports an alpha channel, JPEG does not, so PNG, hit Save. When it asks for the, the options here, we wanna make sure that alpha channel is checked, and we'll do RGB 48-bit. All right, now that we've, now that we've set up, we have, we've clicked Save File, and we've got it all set up with the file path. We're gonna click Render, this box down in the corner, Make sure that your camera is set to camera 001 and not the top front or left viewport. Hit render. Boom, right there is our shadow pass. Perfect. So those are the two elements that we'll need for compositing. Uh, we'll talk about compositing at a later date, but basically between those two things, now that we have our shadows separated, we're able to dial those in separately from our videos, from our, from our beauty pass. So the beauty pass, we're gonna wanna tune into color match, make it perfect, just make it, set the black level to the right level, set the white level to the right, get the gamma set right. And then for the, uh, the shadow pass, same thing, we'll set shadows, we'll match them to the other shadows in the scene, affect their color a little bit, get it to be just perfect, and we should have a perfect render for that. For your homework, I want you to experiment, experiment with that, take basically the file you have from last week, and now set it up for proper compositing. If you want to go on and try compositing it, go right ahead. Try tossing that into After Effects and then, and then tweet that at me. In addition to that, for all of you Mental Ray users and also all you V-Ray users, everybody, um, I'm going to turn over to someone who is far more knowledgeable than I about the situation. Zap Anderson is a, is a good friend of mine. And back in 2009, he happened to, uh, he's the guy that actually, he programmed the, uh, the Archer Design Shader for Mental Ray. He did a master class that's about an hour and a half long. Basically, for all of you Mental Ray users, this is going to walk you through and show you how to do everything that I've shown you up to this point in Mental Ray. It's, it's slightly outdated because it's, uh, it's built for, I think, the, the 09 version of 3ds Max. So there's a few things he's going to tell you that have to be enabled that if, if you're using a newer version, have already been by default enabled in your program. But after that, it's all pertinent. Basically, what he's going to do is he's going to go through a lot of the stuff of how to, how to see materials, how to see the quality of materials, how to see the quality of light, which you should be going through, a lot more of the theory stuff. 
it's just the tip of the iceberg to learn where to click in the program. The hard thing to develop and you have, with the thing you have to keep on practicing is, is develop your eye. You have to learn to see light in a different way. Watch this. This will get you a good foundation and you'll really be ahead of the curve in terms of understanding it. So get it, make an account here. Watch this for an hour and a half. Um, maybe once, maybe twice. Uh, follow along if you're trying to do a mental ray. If you're doing in V-ray, you can see where the parallels are to V-ray, as well as um, as well as learning a lot of stuff about materials and lighting and how they, well, the physical properties of it and how they work and why we work in a linear workspace. Next week, we're going to talk about a few more, a few different examples of uh, we're going we're to really learn about how to adjust for different lighting environments because I saw a lot of you guys on Twitter were were struggling with. You, you follow along the one that I do fine, but when you switch over to taking your own picture and doing your own background, the lighting's not quite set up right. So we're gonna go through qualities of lighting. So make sure you watch Zap's hour and a half long talk so you'll be ready for next week and make sure you try out using the, uh, the V-Ray material wrapper. I'll talk to you next week.